Hello everyone, I'm Rinal Mehta and welcome back to Marketing91.com. We provide management and marketing training to students and professionals worldwide through our courses, videos and community. This video is part of a comprehensive take on the gamut of human resource management. Let's start with the gamut of compensation. Well, the video entails the following subtopics under compensation, starting with the introduction, case studies of renowned brands such as Cadbury, Microsoft, Somato, Amazon, Google, types of compensation, financial and non-financial, factors influencing compensation, and finally, the objectives of compensation. Let's start with a brief introduction. In appreciation for their efforts towards the company, employees are given compensation, which include both monetary and non-monetary rewards. It is reimbursed in the form of stipend, salary and benefits for employees, including paid time off for vacation and sick days, health insurance, maternity leave, travel reimbursement and retirement benefits, etc. Let's look at some examples, starting with the first one of Cadbury. Well, employees at Cadbury get a two-year wage raise of up to 17.5%. In addition to a separate 25% increase in holiday pay, upwards of about 1,000 Cadbury employees have received a two-year salary agreement worth up to 17.5%. An agreement of two years, which includes incentives and sees employees pay climb above the current inflation rate. A total of 80% of the workforce stationed at several Cadbury plants near Hereford, who are members of the Union Unite, voted in favour of the deal. As stated by a Cadbury spokesperson, This agreement represents an improved overall package including not only base pay but other elements which enable us to both recognise a colleague's important contribution but also remain competitive in our manufacturing operations. A win-win for both parties. Moving on to another example of Indian brands Paytm and Zomato. Paytm and Zomato announced ESOPs worth INR 944 crores and benefits for the top brass executives of the firm. Directors, key management personnel and dependents of uh, key management personnel receive payments from Paytm totaling INR 564 crores in place of ESOP expenses. Zomato paid its CEO, CFO and company secretary wages and ESOP expenses as well as other employment benefits totaling INR 380 crores. This is despite the fact that Zomato recorded a consolidated loss of INR 250.8 crores in quarter 2 of uh, financial year 23 and Paytm's net loss increased to INR 571 crore in the same quarter. Moving on to another example of compensation in this case of Microsoft. In order to retain staff, Microsoft will increase salaries and stock awards. In accordance with a memo from CEO Satya Nadella, he said, Our talent is in high demand. The money for pay raises might nearly double as a result of the shift. Let's talk about this in detail. Microsoft is to nearly double its allocation for staff pay hikes and increase the range of stock awards it grants select employees by a minimum of 25% in an attempt to maintain personnel and assist them in adjusting to inflation. The software industry behemoth stated in a statement that early to mid-career employees would be primarily impacted by the change. Microsoft is engaged in a heated competition for expertise with firms like Google and Facebook owner Meta platforms, Amazon and also other startups. This competition is on top of the company's struggle with the rising cost of living and the restricted housing market in Seattle. Moving further, there has been a lot of competition in areas like artificial intelligence, cloud computing, metaverse and cybersecurity. Additionally, a lot of people have migrated and are reevaluating their career possibilities as a result of the pandemic. In a memo that Bloomberg was able to get, CEO Satya Nadella made a statement. Time and time again, we see that our talent is in high demand because of the amazing work that you do. The compensation plan at Microsoft consists of a base pay bonuses and shares. As a result, a sizable portion of the corporation staff, which is as of June 30, 2021, totaled about 181,000, will be impacted by the changes. In fact, uh, before becoming a corporate partner and moving up the pay scale, level 67 is the pen ultimate tire that an employee may reach. It is difficult to predict how much the new remuneration levels will equate in terms of dollars because the corporation chose not to disclose pay scales. However, according to Glassdoor, a fresh grad is estimated to having an earning of $163,000 with Microsoft in the position of a software engineer. In order to compete in the employment market, Microsoft said that the company would be increasing the highest base wage it pays its staff by more than double. The pay would increase from $160,000 to about $350,000. Moving on to more details about compensation as a topic. Now, employees would not be passionate about pouring their hearts and souls into organizational work if they were not rewarded sufficiently. Suitable compensation strategies must be implemented in order to draw in and keep the best employees. In addition, keeping labor expenditures in check is also a priority for the company. That means the company cannot go all out as far as compensation is concerned. 
When trying to hire too many individuals at once, it must take into account the pressures of the market. While attempting to maintain order in the organization, it must weigh every one of these issues. The package of benefits that businesses offer to people in exchange for their readiness to carry out various duties and responsibilities inside the company is termed as compensation. Moving on to another example of Amazon. Amazon increases hourly pay rate at the cost of nearly a billion dollars per year. Amazon declared a pay hike for hourly employees in the states that according to the company will raise the average starting compensation for frontline workers in transportation and warehouse to more than $19 an hour. The minimum wage set by the company for all hourly employees in the states is still about $15 per hour. The boost would result in increased spending of nearly a billion dollars over the coming year. By the end of 2021, Amazon had higher than 1.1 million employees working for them in the United States. Moving on to another example of Foxconn, the uh, contract manufacturing electronic giant. They introduced a new bonus program for both current and previous employees. According to the company's recent announcement, Foxconn factory in Central China has introduced new incentive plan for its current employees who have a low percentage of absenteeism as well as appropriate allowance plans to entice its previous workers to return to work. The company would provide a one-time incentive of 500 uh, yuan, that is about ballpark $70, for previous workers who left the facility between October 1 and November 10 and who are now back at work. As per Foxconn, returning employees who work for longer than a week would receive a second incentive of 30 yuan for every hour, which would continue for two months starting in December and be given out along with pay. Now let's look at the types of compensation. Where broadly there are two types, financial and non-financial. Uh, let's take a stab at each one, starting with financial compensation. Well, salary and wages are the most basic type of financial compensation. Salary is the term used to describe the monthly premium of compensation. In contrast, wages are per hour rates of pay, typically followed at quick service restaurants worldwide like McDonald's. Regardless of how many hours a worker has worked, annual raises are the possibilities of salary and wages. Moving on to the next is incentives. Incentives are payouts made in conjunction with salaries and wages. It is sometimes known as payment by outcome. Profits, sales, productivity, and cost-cutting initiatives are all factors that influence incentives. Personalized incentives can be used to reward particular employee productivity. Group incentive programs need corporate to work from all members of the group on an equal playing field to complete the task at hand. Moving on to the next, allowances. Allowances entail the likes of uh, house rent allowance, conveyance allowance, leave travel allowance, DNS allowance, etc. Number four is claims. Invoice claims may cover a portion of your monthly compensation. These cover things like the cost of using the phone or a mobile device, internet access, and medical expenses. These have a cap and are often paid in exchange for the presentation of legitimate bills by the employee. At number five is uh, the concept of gratuity. This is a compulsory national component that is included in the pay breakdown. However, it is only received after an individual resigns from the job after working there for longer than five years, typically the condition in India. In India, for instance, the 1972 Payment of Gratuity Act governs the gamut of gratuity and its norms in the country. At number 6 is added bonuses. These include perks for employees such as medical treatment, healthcare and group insurance, canteen facilities, hospitalization, uniforms, accident relief, recreational activities, etc. And finally, perks or perquisites. Senior executives are entitled to these perquisites, which would encompass stock options, plans, paid holidays, furnished homes, corporate cars, club memberships, and other kinds of things. Moving on to non-financial compensation. Well, these include the likes of, first, duties of the position given to you, as in they are enriched. Number two, acknowledgement of your excellent work. Uh, well, a development potential in your firm. Effective management or good management by seniors. Pleasant working environment. Off late, it's been work from home. Number six, uh, task sharing. And at number seven, flexible working hours. Well, these are certain non-financial compensation that a company typically provides its employees. Let's look at the factors influencing compensation, starting with the first one, state of the labor market. The disparity between the demand for particular employee categories and the supply of such individuals on the labor market has a significant impact on how remuneration is administered. There will be a shortage of labor when there's a gap between demand and supply for labor. To attract the necessary number of qualified workers in such a circumstance, firms are compelled to pay higher rates of remuneration. This is due to the fact that those with the necessary expertise would undoubtedly expect more pay for their services. Number two, laws regarding labor. The management of pay and salaries inside a company is typically impacted by specifically by labor laws and regulations of that particular country. Broadly speaking, the minimum salaries and bonuses that must be paid to employees, the workloads, and the working hours are all governed by the laws that the federal and state governments pass. At number three, comparable pay ranges. 
Companies should take into account the salaries offered by comparable businesses in the same sector for positions with a similar skill set. When a firm pays its personnel less than the going rate, its workforce strength will suffer owing to the increasing labor turnover. In contrast, it would be able to draw in and keep the top talent if it pays more than the going rate of pay. As a result, the organization's pay policies are significantly influenced by current wages. At number 4 is the cost of living. During periods of price inflation, the expense of living becomes a significant element in deciding the salary of employees. Real earnings decrease along with the rise in the average cost of living, which has an impact on employees' ability to make purchases. Organizations typically retain a percentage of employee salary in a dynamic form to account for fluctuations in the cost of living. An example of this would be the DNS allowance. The DNS allowance is set in accordance with the current cost of living and adjusts when the cost of living changes. At number 5, Collective Bargaining One of the key designing elements in how compensation is administered is the union's level of strength, typically works for the manufacturing setup. Pay agreements are often reached in support of the workforce when unions are powerful within the company. This is due to the fact that these unions put a lot of pressure on businesses to agree to their terms and conditions. We have covered this in our video on collective bargaining under the human resource management course. At number 6 is the technology. The degree and complexity of the technologies available in the sector might also have an impact on compensation administration. The firm might not be motivated to give greater salaries for such professions if the manually performed duties can be readily and successfully replaced with the current technology. The company may choose automation over paying greater remuneration to employees of the company if there is a skill gap in such positions. At number 7 is the capacity of the organization to pay. Although companies might be ready to give their workers more money, they might not have the resources to do so. It stands to reason that one of the most important aspects that affect how pay is administered is the organizational financial stability. Financial viability has been a major concern among new age startups once the funding dries up. Moving on to objectives of compensation. First, equity. Entails three types. First, under that is the internal equity. This pertains to paying employees wages that commensurate with the level of complexity of the jobs that are assigned. Harder jobs should be compensated better. Number two, individual equity. Individual equity emphasizes equal compensation for equal work, that is, that each individual's wage is reasonable in relation to others performing the same or similar task. And third, external equity. External equity guarantees that a worker is paid fairly in contrast to other workers in the market who have positions with similar responsibilities, an important aspect. Another objective, allocation of labor in a way that is efficient. This suggests that workers will relocate to wherever they experience an ad benefit, such a shift might be from one area to the next or from one job to another. This shift could be within or outside an organization. The accessibility or distribution of financial incentives is what drives the strength. Next, get the employee's attention. In order to recruit the top people for a company, compensation needs to be competitive. The compensation must be really good enough to encourage applicants to join you if an organization needs the services of a qualified employee. Next, retain the best talent, obviously. If pay levels drop, staff members would quit the company. Therefore, having a suitable pay plan is crucial if you want to keep the top staff. And finally, incentivize novel approaches and conduct. A worker's devotion. Dedication to his or her job, experience, the degree of danger involved in the position, and any initiative performed shall all be recognized through compensation. Employee disintegration will occur or they may quit if such efforts are not recognized by employers. Moving on to a final example of Google, wherein Google wants to reduce its spending on employee benefits. Google used to be known for having a vibrant and exciting working environment. However, it is now shifting its approach to employee benefits, so there may be other steps to tighten the purse strings. Sundar Pichai, the CEO of Google, warned the staff not to mistake enjoyment for gain. A number of our major companies have also been severely impacted by global economic recession, including this internet giant. People who attended the last Google Town Hall event took advantage of the chance to express their complaints, notably regarding what they perceived to be the business's practice of nickel and diming employees. Google has been open and honest to all its challenges in recent months. For the second consecutive quarter in July, the corporation announced earnings and sales that were below expectations. While reminding his staff, Pichai said, we don't get to choose the macroeconomic conditions always. Google created the Simplicity Sprint initiative to gather suggestions from employees on how to reduce waste and to get better outcomes quicker in order to solve the issue. So that's it folks, this brings an end to the topic on compensation. These are the list of sources and links referred to for our content in the video. Thank you and stay tuned for more videos.